Our client needed help with a marketing problem because while North African countries have been swept by calls for change, further south in Zimbabwe, there may be calls, but nothing's changed. In fact, it's getting worse. The continent's most brutal dictatorship is arresting people simply for gathering to watch what's happening in Libya. If you're a newspaper like the Zimbabwean, speaking out against this regime will get your delivery vehicles burned and your vendors beaten, making it impossible to rely on street sales. We needed to sell subscriptions to the huge communities of Zimbabwean refugees and expats around the world by reminding them of the Zimbabweans' critical role in reporting this horror, especially because in a turbulent 2011, the Zimbabwean crisis barely featured in international news. So it was no surprise that when Mugabe's CIO tore apart a small photographic exhibition in Harare, it didn't make global headlines, but it gave us an idea. If this regime had something to hide, we had something to show. We sent an appeal for images to photojournalists who had worked in Zimbabwe over the past year. Within days, we were inundated with photographs of the crimes against humanity that lay beneath ZANU-PF censorship. By positioning the iconic map of Zimbabwe to appear as an empty speech bubble, we showed that these people had been silenced. And then we showed that by supporting the Zimbabwean, you could make their voices heard. Billboards, print and posters directed people to a website where they could read the stories behind the pictures. Here eyewitness accounts from photographers. All she could say after I put my camera away was, my parents are dead and I have nothing. And that's why I'm dying now. And locate the incidents on a satellite map. They could purchase subscriptions for themselves or for individuals and organizations inside Zimbabwe. Within hours of launching the site, our blog exploded with commentary from Zimbabweans around the world. But the voice of poorer Zimbabweans without internet access was silent. So we developed the voice boxes. Simple devices we mounted in safe places for Zimbabweans to relate their comments to operators in South Africa. Oh, hi. I want my name to be anonymous. Eh? My father died in, when I was doing phone call. The treatment given to the media, the people of Zimbabwe who want the change. By this stage, our campaign had spread across the world. Zimbabwe was back in the headlines. But when the Zimbabwean wanted to advertise in their homeland, local media owners refused to flight the campaign. To counter this, we put thousands of decals into the copies of the newspaper that were crossing the border with an explanation of how to assemble homemade versions of the voiceless campaign. But it was when we saw this that we realized that an oppressed country had become its own symbol of freedom. We used the silence the regime had imposed to talk to the world.